if your dreams and your goals uh, don't scare you enough, that's amazing. Uh, then they're not big enough. Hey, it's Leighton here for another episode of our New Heights Adventure Blog. Today we're going hiking with a good friend named Morgan Vincent, who's a school chaplain and a passion for the outdoors and all sorts of interesting things. He's a real heart for kids and one of the hardest workers I know when it comes to just getting in there and doing things with kids. So, we'll go catch up with him, eh? Hello, we're here today. Uh, I'm about to start the North Brother Walking Trail. Uh, I've never done it before. I've been in Port here for a year and I'm keen to do it today. There we go. Alright, let's get into it. <laughs> let's go. Well, we've just had a nice little warm up. What's happened there, Morgan? Took the wrong turn. We ended up in a quarry and a dead end. So, first two minutes of the hike. Good start, but we'll try this one up here. A bit about yourself. So my name is Morgan Vincent. Uh, I'm a chaplain and school teacher um, here at Port Macquarie Adventist School. Uh, I've got three older brothers, two parents, uh, all live in Newcastle and I enjoy the outdoors uh, which is why I'm here uh, keeping fit, active uh, and I like to keep learning every day of my life. So Morgan tell us what's your connection to youth work? Yeah so my connection to youth work uh, is that I'm a chaplain uh, of a primary school and so that means that I get to work with um, students from uh, four years old in pre kindy all the way through to year six, uh, so 12 year olds. Uh, so that's my main connection um, five days a week, um, 40 plus weeks a year. So, Morgan, tell us what's your number one passion in life? My number one passion is seeing people, um, young or old, uh, serve and trying to help people every day of their life. I believe that uh, our life is more fulfilling uh, and purposeful when we're helping other people and instilling that value into young children uh, is why I wake up every morning. Okay, Morgan, tell us your greatest achievement or your number one highlight mountaintop experience. Mm. Tell us that story. Sure. Uh, it was climbing the Overland Track uh, in Tasmania. It was over 100 kilometers. Uh, I did it with a friend of mine, and we did it over about six days, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. Uh, that was something that it was my first uh, multi-day hike um, doing and he was there uh, with me. It was a lot of fun. Um, we climbed Cradle Mountain. Uh, we saw lots of uh, animals, uh, swam in uh, rivers and lakes. Um, but as well, it was uh, a great sense of accomplishment to, to do that, uh, to get to the end uh, and knowing that we hadn't cheated or like got a helicopter out or anything like that. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to do the overland track down in Tasmania. Awesome, so you said that was a great achievement. Can you sort of sort of describe or tell us the story of that exact moment where you sort of felt that satisfaction of completing it? Yeah, on the second last day, uh, there's a place where you can take a, a boat uh, to the end instead of walking the last maybe 12 to 15 kilometers. And I was with a friend of mine and there was another walker there and we all decided, uh, no, let's finish it. Let's walk the full uh, track and it was in that moment even though we were very tired and had sore feet and legs and we were hungry we were tired i uh, wanted to have a shower uh, it was in that moment when we all agreed and said hey let's finish this let's do the full track uh, that there was a great sense of achievement in not not necessarily giving up but just saying 
we're going to persevere and persist through this. Uh, even though it would have been easier to just take the boat and finish it from there, we decided, no, let's do this. And that brought a great sense of satisfaction uh, and personal achievement, uh, knowing that uh, we'd given it our all. And yeah, when we got to the end of the overland track the next day, uh, to the information center, we put our bags down, got a picture, and we could look back and say, we did the whole overland track. Uh, we hadn't cheated. Uh, we hadn't, like the French uh, backpacker we saw along the way, do it uh, without paying the fee. We did it all, and we were proud of ourselves, uh, knowing that we'd cheered each other along the way. Awesome. Um, how did this adventure of yours impact your life, mm. the everyday life? <clears throat> yeah, it, uh, it did a lot. Uh, you know, doing the overland track, probably after climbing Cradle Mountain on the first day, I thought, man, I just want to go back home. Uh, I was, it was tiring. Uh, it, was a, it was a big day of walking, but uh, knowing that I persevered through the, through the six days of walking uh, told me a lot about life. Uh, I like to learn a lot from nature and being outdoors. <clears throat> and we, we remember the saying from, uh, from the movie where it says life is like a box of chocolates, but I learned a lot that life is like a hike, uh, that there are ups, there are downs, there are times where you want to give up. Uh, there are rewarding and amazing and beautiful views that you can look at, uh, but it's not just about reaching to the end and finishing, uh, but it's about the journey. It's about how you get there. And for me, uh, you know, in hiking, I thought, man, I can just be grumpy. I can be miserable. I can just be thinking, oh, it's so tiring and I'm so worn out. But in taking the mindset of, you know, this is a, a personal growth experience, it meant a lot, and I view life now as not necessarily about reaching the end goal, though that's important, but how am I getting to that end goal? With the hike, as I said, it was uh, a great opportunity to uh, have that positive mindset, knowing that uh, it's through ed each day that we did the walk, uh, it's tiring, but to persevere, and I think that's one of the greatest lessons that uh, each one of us can learn is to persevere, uh, to keep getting back up, uh, and not giving up in life. Well, that's awesome, and we've persevered these moggies for a long half now, so. Man, eating this alive, so let's get this sort of done, eh? Hey? Yep, let's go! Let's do it. Last few steps. Go to the other side, eh? Yeah. So Morgan, tell us, what's your number one skill or your best quality when it comes to working with young people? Mm. When, uh, when, when I work with young children, uh, being a chaplain, something I try to do every day uh, is to encourage them. And it's a talent I believe that I have to possess and to give on to young people is to show them uh, that their lives uh, mean something, that they have talents, uh, to believe in them uh, so that they can become the best versions of themselves. What's been your biggest mistake or the worst moment dealing with the kids that you've made? Mm. Coming from uh, a teaching background, uh, so as well as being chaplain, I teach uh, one or two days a week. And I think one of the biggest mistakes I did early on in my career <coughs> was think that I could walk into a classroom and just teach. I would walk into the classroom, try and explain maybe a maths lesson or an English lesson, uh, thinking I understood it but yet then the child turning to me and saying, I've got no idea what you're talking about. I learned that early on in my career as a teacher, as a chaplain, mentoring them, uh, that I can't rely uh, on my own wisdom, uh, but I need to, to be able to uh, reach and speak into their lives uh, in a way that they understand as well. 
So Morgan, tell us uh, what did you learn from that experience and mm. can you give us like one tip or practical skill that we can use to connect with kids on their level? Yeah, in, in my humble opinion, I've uh, only been working with children for a few years, uh, the key lesson would be to not try and be the cool guy. Um, I believe kids in this day and age aren't looking for that cool kind of, you know, hipster, retro, trendy kind of guy to, or girl to, to kind of be their friend. Uh, I think young people are looking for genuine, real, authentic uh, mentors, uh, people that they can look up to in their life, uh, people who uh, are transparent and honest uh, rather than someone who's trying to be cool and act as though they've got their life together but um, yeah so that was a lesson I learned early on. Uh, so Morgan last question what's some parting advice for myself starting this mentoring business or anyone watching that wants to make a difference in people's lives? Yeah for me uh, the advice is simple I, and I try to live by it every day it's this uh, that if your dreams and your goals uh, don't scare you enough uh, if they don't make you think, wow, I'm never going to achieve this, uh, then they're not big enough. Um, I believe that uh, we were born to achieve greatness, and to achieve success, and sometimes we're our own worst enemy in fulfilling our goals and in uh, pursuing our dreams. Uh, dream big, and if they scare you, then that's a good thing, because I believe that uh, for myself as a chaplain, um, I need to expect great things from God and therefore attempt great things for God. Well, there we have it. The words of wisdom from Morgan Vincent. What a legend. And thanks for Thank sharing you. the knowledge. And I guess it's time to go back to Ennis Hill and get on with the rest of the day. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. All right, let's run. Let's do it. Don't tell anyone, we're trying to film it so it looks like we went all the way. <laughs> <laughs>